I was going to set up the other camera with the big, you know, me and the screen again, but I figured it's kind of pointless. I'll do it tomorrow, though. But I wanted to talk about this before I lost interest or energy, because pretty soon I think this product is going to be of no interest to anyone, and no one's to be putting energy into it. The Surface Laptop was announced at Microsoft's EDU event, and uh, I think a lot of people, perhaps with bad communication, thought because it was the EDU event and they were talking about educational things, that this was aimed to be targeted at Chromebook users or the market that Cr the Chromebook sort of lives and operates in. It's very clear from the price that's not the case. This is not meant for the lower educational market. This is meant for higher educational customers, as they mentioned in the presentation. And they also specifically mentioned sp multiple times Apple and MacBooks. We needed to bring a perfectly balanced product, a product that had never been brought together like this before. And a way to kind of put it in context is let's just talk about other laptops because it frames it. Now, a lot of students use MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, and we know that, and those are awesome products. I mean, they are awesome products. The Surface laptop itself is lighter and thinner than any MacBook Air or MacBook Pro on the market right now. It's 50% faster than the MacBook Air, and when you compare the Core i7 Surface laptop to the Core i7 13.3-inch MacBook Pro, the Surface laptop is faster. And all that comes to this moment. We have more battery life in this product than any MacBook on market today. So this is obviously, in my mind, clearly a torpedo targeted at the MacBook user and not the Chromebook user. And as a MacBook user who is slightly disgruntled with the progress that Apple's been making in a lot of areas for people who do want to do things productive with their machines, I think that I'm the guy, right, that they're going for. You know, maybe a little bit old, I'm out of school, but I'm, I'm using a 2015 MacBook. I want to upgrade. I have not upgraded to the new Touch Bar models because I wasn't that impressed by them, and I wasn't convinced that the spec increase would be worth uh, the price. And so when I see this laptop, and they announced a, a model that was releasing it at $9.99, and I usually like to dig into the Apple refurb market, which is where I think everybody should be buying Apple products. If you want to cut out that Apple tax, Get Apple refurbished, certified refurbished products. You still get a warranty, and they come out. They're, they're great quality. They're, you know, it's Apple. They don't want to put out crap with their name on it. So I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, well, that's about what I want to spend. I want to spend around 1000 or maybe around 1500 or less dollars. And so I was actually legitimately intrigued. I, I work as a systems administrator, and I work in IT, and that means I'm working in offices that run Windows. So my office and work environment is Windows, but at home, I... I'm pretty much all Apple, and so I know, I know what Windows is, I know how to use it, familiar with Windows, I've been building my own machines for a long time, but now I'm primarily in the laptop market, and I'm curious enough to be intrigued by this, but when I went into the specs, right, you go into the specs, the 999 model is capped at 4 gigs of memory, that's not enough, period, it's just not enough, and so when you move over to the 8 gig option, right, you get into, a, first of all, they boot your SSD up, which is fine, I guess, because 256 is probably the lowest you would want to have modern day for your laptop, since it has to just carry around a lot of its own data. Uh, you get into 1299, and at 1299, you no longer have a price advantage over the MacBook, the regular old MacBook, which, yes, it's running uh, Intel Core M instead of Intel, Intel uh, i processors, so it's a mobile, you know, fanless processor. It's not a true desktop class processor. And nothing in the Mac uh, world is giving you a 7th generation processor, unfortunately, in their laptop line. But why? But if you're asking me to move, if you're asking me to move, and you're asking me to put all of my files in a different location and reorganize everything, it's got to be cheaper. And that's got to be something that Microsoft is able to offer because of the you know famous Apple tax. You're supposedly paying more money so that Apple can be your systems integrator. But Microsoft's not burdened with all of that, so they should be able to and always have been able to, at least our Windows OEMs have always been able to undercut Apple on price, but that's not what's happening here. So I don't feel a strong incentive to move. Cool colors. I like the design. Of course, you can only get an i5 if you uh, get the cooler colors, which is fine because I always get basic silver because I'm just ordinary and default. Uh, but I plan on getting an i5, so how could I complain? Well, I can't get an i5 with 16 gigs of memory. So that doesn't really help me for future-proofing. Speaking of future-proofing, the I.O. on this shit is ancient. It's, uh, they don't have Thunderbolt, and they don't have USB-C. This thing is not going to be fun to use in 18 months, and I'm trying to get a new laptop. 
So there's a lot of problems with this machine where if I was going to get a Windows machine for work, I had to get a Windows machine, I would get a cheap Samsung machine or, or you know, I would just get a really inexpensive Windows OEM rather than moving to this. I think this would be good if you were interested. I mean, look at $21.99. At that point, you're like, it, it, like, it would be really good in keeping somebody, if you just look at the comparable specs here, this is the MacBook Air, uh, new, $9.99, you're getting more memory, smaller SSD. Uh, if you go to the refurbs, you're getting, you can see, you, if you go to Apple certified refurb, I, I don't think it's a coincidence, but I noticed, a, like, these things come and they go. Uh, but I noticed a lot more MacBook Airs and MacBook Pro models became available literally the day after Microsoft released this product. So they're trying to, I mean, so you can see what you can get on the, on the, uh, on the Apple side of things for the price that Microsoft's offering. This is the used stuff. If you go to the new stuff from $12.99, you can get a new MacBook, uh, Turbo Boost to 2.2 or 2.7 on the gig, or let's keep it 2.2 to keep the price comparable. But they, they don't go less than 8 gigs of memory. And that's running Mac OS. Mac OS is a very clean, you know, Nix-based operating system, uh, very lightweight. And so you can get a lot done for $12.99 on the Apple side. I'm not saying that someone who is, is you know, all things being equal wouldn't select the Surface over Apple for a variety of reasons. I don't want to go into that. But the point I'm trying to make is if this isn't going to be moving anyone from Apple over to Windows. This isn't that you piqued my curiosity and then you lost my curiosity once I saw the spec and the price of this thing. You know, if I was curious about Apple from the Windows side, maybe you're telling me that I can pull this thing out at the coffee shop too and make, you know, people feel bad about their life decisions because it's just so pretty like the Apple people do at the coffee shop. But you know, what else are, what, are, what else is being offered here? We had to push this product to its peak performance while keeping the device as thin and light as possible. Our thermal design allows this front edge of the product to stay under 10 millimeters. That was critical, critical, because if we're gonna bring something beautiful to you, keep all that performance in it, we couldn't start trading off any of the form of this product. We want students to be proud when they pull it out of their bag, and they want to feel proud when they do that. Feel proud when they do that. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it, and, and Microsoft's in this tricky position. I'll end on this point. They're in this tricky position because if they do, first of all, before, there's a second to last point. You're locked into the Windows Store here with this Windows 10 S on this thing. This is kind of worth mentioning. So that's another reason why I don't know why this costs so much. If you set it up so you're getting a royalty on every single software purchase that I make on this, you should be able to give me a break on the price. Kind of Isn't that how the Xbox model works? Like you guys get a royalty on every game sold and therefore you can sell me this hardware at a very low price. But they can't do that because of my last point. They do that. Not only do they start taking Apple's customers away, they start taking away other Windows uh, original equipment manufacturers' customers away. The other other Windows OEMs that are making Windows machines, Windows laptops, uh, the whole Windows ecosystem of hardware, desktop machines, and so on, they'll be cutting into those people. And so they get their fingers in too many different pies. So you get this Windows 10 S where I am required to give you a royalty on all my app purchases, and therefore some developers don't want to be there. Otherwise, i got to pay 50 bucks to get the actual 10 Pro operating system. At least they give you that avenue. Um, Windows 10 S, as a side note, might be good for grandmas. I could see it being a good idea. You know, you get sort of the benefits of the Apple ecosystem and the closed system. Uh, at the same time, you get the, the generic, you know, you get all the other compatibility that you get with the, uh, the Windows platform. So I can see it having some utility for some people. But for me, coming back to, presumably, coming back to Windows, it wouldn't be over this product. I mean, I'd still be in the territory where if I wanted to play uh, play games, I'd get a Windows machine and I'd get a desktop, and the desktop would be much more powerful for 60% of the cost of what they're offering in this device. I would like a laptop. I would like something mobile. I'm still not buying what Apple's offering new. So it just seems like this could, this, this is, the, I'm it. I'm the guy that they want to sell this to, and I'm not interested in it. And, and I don't think that I'm being unfair. I just think that, well, boy, you know, let's be realistic, okay? I said I'd get an i5, but then I can't get 16 gigs. So if I want to get 16 gigs, I'm locked into an i7. Say I stick to the 200, 1599. For 1599, I can get a new MacBook Pro. For 1599, what, what am I getting on the, uh, was this refurb? I don't know. No, that's air. Where are the refurbs? Where are my refurbs? I think this is them. What can I get for 1599 right now if I just wanted to replace this? 
I could get that, or I could get uh, this guy right here, uh, 2.9 dual core i5, same processor ballpark there. Uh, same. To, so everything's the same. Everything's going to be the same, and I get to play with my touch bar gimmick, which, you know, that's cool and all. I don't think it's the same or equivalent to a touch screen, but I'm not getting it. I don't get this product. Is this people who use Windows who want something to spend money on? Because that's not me. And I don't know what that has to do with the MacBook or what this product has to do with anything anybody wants. I just, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. And so, I don't know, you might have different opinions about it. I didn't really come in here with anything that structured to say, as it's probably apparent right now if you've stuck in with the whole video. But if you have any other opinions, if you think I'm being unfair, I just see everything that I could get in here somewhere else in the OEM market, which is probably how this whole pricing structure was designed for the Surface Laptop, but then what is the point of making it? I don't understand who this is for. I don't understand why I would be locked into Windows 10S on a premium priced object. It should be lower priced if I'm locked into Windows 10S without paying you $50 to get out of Windows 10S. Nothing about this makes sense. Your thoughts below. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Buttery smooth, buttery smooth, buttery smooth, buttery smooth.